Hey John, hi. Am I audible? Yes. How's it okay, going? Good. It's good. It's good. I'm struggling with uh, Docker yet. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Me too. I was playing with it to see what's going on, but it's not. Uh, like if it's I do easy. Docker full, uh, it works. But then inside that, uh, inside Docker and command, it doesn't work. I don't know why. It's very weird. Hmm. Uh. So. Let's see. I might have you share your screen because I don't understand. Yeah, I can. I can see your screen. Okay. So this is what it looks like when I'm doing it here, just so you can see. Um, I did the build. So where does it get cut off in yours? It was. Um, so after the uh, like the Docker run command uh, gets executed and it's uh -huh. getting stuck there. It is it's not. Uh, I have there. given a print statement after the Docker execution that is not getting uh, executed. But then uh, this happened first, and in, like uh, after you told me, after you have made the changes, and uh, now I started executing again. It ran the test. It took like one hour, but it uh, ran the test, and it said the setup test failed. Huh. And uh, now I tried to include the image like Cloudera slash Quick Start, and it's not working now. Huh. Okay. So I know that one thing I did that I just changed. So let's see. Now I'm here. I got to make this bigger. Let's see. Okay. So one thing I realized I screwed up was this patch had not been imported. So that's like the bash command was there. But then once you exit bash, then it was like the patch command is not imported. Um, but other than that, let's see. I mean, it's still... Oh, wait. All right. So it takes a while. Does it do all this stuff? Like, does it output these logs? Uh, no, for me, all the logs didn't come. Like, it huh. came, uh, I'll just uh, show. Like, so, what happened? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, the other thing ran. Okay, it took like some uh, 2650 seconds. Uh, I don't know for how long, uh, how wow. many hours that is. Yeah, so that thing ran and it's throwing an uh, like the same exception. Cloudera slash quick start is not found. Okay. Wow. Um, let's see, test, test source, okay, so, uh, I found this uh, link when I was googling the error, I found uh, one of the, I'll just share that with you, okay, I've sent, sent the link in Gitter, let's so here, see. this uh, docker run command, the basically the run function that we call in Python, so that will first pull the container and yep. then it will execute the command. Mm -hmm. And uh, here he has said that if we do like that, it won't work. Like we should directly do docker run, cloud error slash quick start. Uh, we shouldn't like pull it and then try to run it. Let's see. Uh, okay, so... Wait, so the problem was that he did pull and then run, or...? Yeah. I mean, okay, so... Here's what I would say. Um, what happens when you do, like... Oh, what happened? Uh, I just changed all my size of my fonts. Okay, um, what happens when you do, like... Uh, let's see... Okay, sorry, one second, everything got messed up. So, Docker, history, out era, quick start. What happens when you do that? Oh, I will do that one minute. Here, I'll send it over. It's saying error response from daemon, no such image cloud error slash quick start. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So it wasn't able to successfully pull that image. That's what's going yeah. on. So it is a problem with the pull. So it's got to be something internet related or maybe hard disk space related. 
do you have enough hard drive space? Because it's 6.34 gigabytes. That's pretty big. Yeah, like uh, in my new laptop, I have like 8 GB RAM and 256 GB internal memory. And I, ha I haven't used it at all. So okay. Space yeah, okay. Because, because of the RAM, because it's just 8 GB. But then the process no. is 2.4 gigahertz, so shouldn't that like... It's fine. It should be, that should be fine. Um, what if you, what if happens if you do, um, let's see, like, uh, D is it DF-H? Oh, jeez. It's kind of a mess, isn't it? Um, oh, yours won't be as much of a mess, I don't think. Um, yeah, what happens if you do DF-H? So, like, DF-H... Okay, I'm sharing that uh, with you. Oh, can you make it like? Oh, the yeah. Formatted, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, so no worries. Um, okay, so basically, like. Hardly anything's been used. Um, so yeah, you should have plenty of disk space. Um, let's see. Um, are you on a Mac now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, weird things are probably happening. So do you have... You okay. set up Docker though, right? Yeah. Okay. And then... Okay, 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 okay. Um, did you have to do the Docker machine stuff? Or, uh, I, I don't I know. I have the Docker desktop running in the background. Okay, okay. So, what happens when you do, like... Uh, can you just share your screen with me, or...? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can you see my terminal? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So, all right. So, okay. So, yeah, it's definitely it didn't pull that image. So, if what if you do like Docker images? Hey, Arvind, how's it going? Okay. Hey, man. Yeah, good. Hectic, actually. Carry on. So, okay, so yeah, so we need to pull that image still. Um, that's yeah. going to oh. be the problem. So, did that's what happened true. when you tried doing the pull? It, did it just take forever and then not work? Or? Uh, no, I just checked if the pull was happening and I didn't uh, go ahead with it because it takes a lot of internet. Like, I thought like pull should happen because like uh, I want to know if it's able to find the like image or not. It's yeah, not just it will... I just saw that yeah. Yeah, I mean, so when you do create and it hasn't pulled the image, it will pull it down. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's going to be, let's see. Um, um, it's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, it'll probably take a long time. You might want to do this while you're not on the call with us so it doesn't, like, lag, yeah, lag sure. stuff out. Yeah. But, yeah, try doing so, the pull and then make sure it shows up in Docker yeah. images. Um Okay. And then, then you'll be able to do the start. But yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Obviously, if it can't pull down the image. Um, yeah. But it's looking promising. I just, cause I, I've, I've gotten it to, to run here. So it definitely works. Oh. So that's good. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, and then what else do I have to say? So yeah, pull the image. Yeah. Um, let's write this down in my notes. Where did it yeah. let's go? Okay. Um, okay, you can stop screen sharing if you want. It might make the connection. Yeah. Let's yeah, sure. See. Okay. So, all right. All right, so we did... Uh, okay, so need to pull docker image uh, my guess is some timeout so mm. when trying to 
to download. So probably hitting a timeout when trying to download a image that's really large while doing create. Okay. Run for. Okay. That's so. That's probably that'll probably fix that problem. Um, okay. Yeah. And then. And uh, or like uh, in the Docker run command, I'll try to see if there is a timeout flag that we can uh, parameter that we can pass. So I think that should make it easier. Because usually in the command line, I give like a hyphen hyphen timeout equal to some like thousand or ten thousand seconds so that like it doesn't uh, like quit before. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. If you have to do that on the command line, then yeah, we'd have to do that there. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So so we'll that'll 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 be great. Um, okay. And then the other thing was I couldn't see. Um, I guess this was my next thing uh, as I was going through it. Um, let's see. Or Docker PS, Docker PS. Okay, yeah, so it created the image. Is this the same one? Yeah. So it started that Docker container. Oh, and then it had been dying because I screwed up stuff. Okay, so I still hadn't gotten it. Uh, let's see. Test. Okay, so it should actually be running this time. Um, uh, yeah, so I can, s let's just see what happens here as we do it, um, to see if it, if, oops, if it is working or not, so, I want to log over here to, so after the post request only, it, it starts, like, it takes a lot of time, until then it works, and then it takes, like, an hour or two, and then it uh, proceeds with the test. Okay, so you're saying if it has the image, it usually works, or it starts the test, right? Or? Uh, like, uh, there was, in the command line, there was a post, uh, like, I mean, debug uh, thing that had a post request. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, this <coughs> post yeah, request? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, that, that is where it hangs. Yeah, it, it okay. It never prints Docker run done for me. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's definitely because it's getting stuck on trying to... Uh, download the image because when it says start it's saying like okay it the docker demon goes wait i don't have that image i need to go pull it first and so that's yeah that's a problem um so once i mean once that gets uh once uh sorry um once you pull the image and have it downloaded then it should start it up very quickly um so you should hit right to getting this log output here um are you God damn it. Um, okay so I have screwed up the, the test case again um, but so my okay what was I doing here Vim test test source alright so okay I'm just not we're just not going to do this um Okay, well, I'll run this, and then we'll come back to it soon, and then we'll talk about some other stuff, because it takes so long to get spun up. Um, uh, let's see. Um, okay, let's wait for it to get spun up here, and then I'll grab the output. So is there anything else you want to talk about? Or let's see, I needed to talk to you about one thing on that, too, still. Um, I realized that there's something a little bit wacky with the... Um, um, let's see, where is that? With the source itself. So, source HDFS, source. Okay, so new open and new close. I realize, so this, um, is that going to work? Yeah, load FD, dump FD. Okay, but then what we wanted to do was, okay, so source equals async exit stack. There, so enter, so we entered the context of the source. Uh, we set the open and close methods. 
So, okay, here's what it was. Um, yeah, we set the open and close methods. Um, and then we enter the context, which is going to trigger the open method, which is going to read the file and then load it. Um, call load FD and then call dump FD. Okay, so yeah, here's what it was. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so I think I had I had showed you how to do this before, so I must I must have gotten it wrong. Um, but this is this is the reason why things are need to change, um, and here's why. So this when we do this get method that rebinds it to another instance, and so we had bound, I had told you to bind it to the source itself. But then, you know, if we bind to that source, right? So basically, self.config.source becomes self when we do this git method. Um, so instead of doing that, or well, we're going to do that because we want it bound to the to the source. But we also need access to the um, to this HDFS source object, right? Which is what is now self right so in this context here within a enter self is hdfs source right um and then but then as soon as we get into new open and new close since we called git on them self becomes what is within the a enter method self.config.source um does that make sense uh, yeah yeah okay so, and then the reason why this needed to change was because since we have like two things where we're needing to talk about self, right? So in this instance, right, within self.config, or within new open and new close, we want to think about self as the, um, self is now the source, right? The sub source that we're using to read the file. Yeah. Um, so we need access to the client from the parent source, um, so we're just going to say like, you know, self.client equals client equals insecure client. And that way we get this client variable. And if we define new open and new close within the function or within the A inner function, we now have access to this client variable because it's within that scope. Um, so I believe this is what we want to do here. Um, but mm -hmm. I wasn't sure because obviously we haven't done any. We haven't we haven't gotten the Hadoop thing yeah. up and running yet. So yeah. I also don't know. Let's see. Um, test test source. Um, so I didn't want to say before I was sure, but I think that needs to happen. And then the user is it root or that's the other thing I didn't know is how. Uh, yeah, because uh, by default, like uh, we lo I logged in as like a root user uh, uh -huh. when I was working on Hadoop installed my laptop, so I kept user to be root. Okay, so in this Cloudera quick start, is it root two or is it something else? Because I hadn't yet uh, gone in there. And I checked. think I'm not sure. Like when I uh, when I did the command line thing, it was uh, root, I guess. But I think that's because I passed the user plan. Oh, I need to check. I'm not sure. Like what what is the default username? Okay. Um, I'll but, check that, and once like uh, I figure out that, I'll change it here as well. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so. Let's write that down. Um, need to figure out what user is within container. Okay, and then here's the other thing. This thing clearly just like stopped running for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm. Oh God. This is this is what I'm confused about now. It's like okay. We started the Cloudera thing, and now it's not running. Um, so I'm wondering what the hell happened. Um, so, OK, so it's saying IT. That's probably what's going on. Um, yeah, OK, so this is oh, OK, OK. So it. I believe what's going on is it's saying IT because then it's going to yeah drop you to a bash cell, um, and so if we don't somehow we're going to need to like keep that thing open, um, 
So minus D will keep it open, right? Like yeah. Well, the minus D runs. Yeah, minus D runs it in the background, which is the same as the detach. D. Uh, oh, wrong thing. Yeah, util. Uh, Hadoop Docker. So. So detach is going to do that, right? But it looks like so it's gonna this user bin Cloudera quick start. Um, here, let's do let's do this here, and then we'll see. I, we can we can inspect it a little more. So okay. Um, do 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 do. It'll be a little more clear here. So let's see. Yeah, okay, so cat or bim user bin. So uh, it is going as root by default. I can see root at this start. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's running as root. Good, good, good call. Um, what was that, Docker? Does it have bim? Okay. Okay, so here's what it's doing. This is this file. Okay, so then at the end, it starts all of these things. It ser starts all of these um, services, and then it just executes bash. Um, so, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Uh, we can just keep the bash shell open. Um, yeah, we can just keep the bash shell open. So we need to somehow detach and keep. Let's see. Once service is started, the bash shell and it will die without this T. Um, so let's see. Okay, so Docker. Um, let's see. Uh, what is that? Do, 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 do. Come on, really? Give me the docs. Not Docker Compose. Okay. Here we go. So. Okay, so when we run, we need the. Uh, Um, we need to duplicate that stuff here. Um, let's see. What does the T stand for? Oh, TTY. Yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure we found out. <laughs> so okay. we want TTY equals true. Um, oops. Oh, where are we? Okay, so we want TTY equals true. And we also want like it's going to be like interactive or something. Um, the trick here will be like, does this make it so that? Um, so the the trick here is, if we do this, is it still going to stay alive? Because you know we're detaching and saying we're in interactive mode at the same time. Um, so. That is kind of, you know, not, those are kind of contradictory. Um, I'm not sure if that will work. I guess we could just try it on the command line here. So if we yeah, say, I'll just try it all. yeah, so if we say detach and that, and then we say docker ps, it looks like it's still running. Docker logs. Docker attach. Okay. Okay, and I think that probably killed it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, mm, see, there's no thing that says interactive here. So, interactive. It may work, it may not work, right? But because so we found the dash T flag, but we didn't find the dash I flag. So, um, <laughs> so you know, it might work with TTY equals true. Uh, it might not. 
So now the next step here will be uh, probably root. Okay, so okay, so then added tty equals true. Uh, need to check that container is still running uh, when uh, when OS dot system bash is called. So do a docker ps within that bash shell that gets created. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. Okay, Ooh, cool. So yeah, then once yeah. you do that, and then so uh, made changes to source to get uh, HDFS so to have new open slash close p within the context of a enter um, and then so like I guess just uh, make sure this works <laughs> but that's you know what you're gonna be finding out as soon as you remove the the call to OS dot system so yeah cool um, and then of course you know anything anything that comes up just ping me um so yeah and I'll, oh i'll push this so is there anything else um okay. uh no this is it i'll try out like whatever we discussed and i'll let you know if there is any block okay cool let's yeah. see okay good. that makes sense hopefully hopefully that gets us you know running a little a little like hopefully it should have the yeah, container up hopefully. and running now. yeah it's this is a really yeah. tricky stuff <laughs> it took like one hour first time and now it takes some 2400 seconds yeah. i have no idea how. yeah yeah definitely try pulling that container image first um and then we'll see what happens from there yeah so, okay cool yeah, sure. so i'll just say um uh, okay import patch and change context of new open slash close Okay, so I push that stuff. All right. Um, so wow, I got too many windows. Um, all right, Arvin, are you still here? Yes, you are. Great. Yeah. yeah can you hear me? Yeah. So, did you want oh, to talk okay. about? Um, do you want to talk about back backtrack stuff or? All right, man. Yeah, just like yeah, I was like working on that for some time, long back. Mm -hmm. And I got something working though. It was not exactly the format that you wanted, but it is something. Yeah. I, I can post the output on Gitter. Okay. Let me do that. Because I don't get enough time to work on this. I'm just bombarded with interviews and projects. Oh yeah, how's your interviewing going? Yeah, man. I'm like have like some interviews lined up, so I need to nice. prepare for that. Nice. Yeah. Hey, that's looking good. Right. So the thing is, I I see like repeated values here. I need to yeah. correct somewhere. And uh, you wanted like the key to be the pack, the key to be the operation that uh, outputs the input, and the value to be in in like the operation dot something, right? I uh, I still didn't like figure out that part. Let's see. Let's see. I had it somewhere here. Um, yeah, so I had been messing around with, you know, the, let's see, PDX Johnny slash PDX Johnny slash DFFML. Um, okay, so I'll take a little time to explain, like, what I was thinking here. Um, 28 branches, jeez. Um, let's see, I need to delete some of those. So, DFAS. All right. Um, export flows to YAML. Oh, that's right, I got that working. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That's not it, though. So, let's just look at DFFM uh, or examples. Should I? Should I? 
CLI. Okay, so this is sort of what I was looking at here. Um, okay, so I'll paste it in here. And I'll explain why. So I was thinking, like, so you have, let's see, you have the operation name, and then you have, or, oh, these are, oh, okay, so you have the definition, and you have the operation that it is generated by? Yeah, outputs it, that outputs that particular definition. Okay. Um, the operation, and then the definition outputs it, or the operation that outputs it. Okay, so if I have, I'm trying to think about this from like the perspective of things that run everything. So if I were to, okay. So this guy comes from here. Okay, but so the thing, I guess the thing with this is I can't specify now if I wanted to, to have the input of one of these come from someplace that like isn't that same definition. So I guess for example here like the cleanup operation, right? We're using the cleanup operation that you wrote in should I, right? Mm -hmm. But if we were to yeah. take that, it's the same one that exists in the git stuff, right? So if we were to take the git one and say, uh, you know, and use that instead of this one that's built into should I because we copied it over. Now we basically we delete one of them and use use the other one, right? Mm. Um, so with this, it has to match the definition, right? But with this with this syntax, we can say use your input value as this output value. So package dot contents, right? And the output value of directory should be your input for the value of directory. Um, and so even though the definition doesn't match, it, it basically says, um, uh, it, 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 we could say that like, you should use this, this, this operations output should map to this operations input. Uh, whereas this one, we only get, we can only give information about where, uh, where output definitions are, or where, out, definitions that are the outputs of operations are coming from right sorry that was a little convoluted but you see what i'm mm -hmm. saying like we can specify um, we can specify where to get things from <laughs> um, there's too many definitions and too many operations man. yeah sorry too many definitions and too many operations you're right you're right okay so with Wait, no so what I, what I did was i just followed like the to do stuff that you mentioned before yeah like when you told me like that you you wanted this this feature to be implicitly defined in the data class. Before mm -hmm. that, you suggest you gave me like a list of to dos, right? I just followed those things. Okay, maybe maybe let's see. Let me see. No, it's there in the guitar only. It's there in the guitar. Oh, it's not pushed. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I pushed it. I pushed okay. these changes. Okay, great. I pushed these changes into my local branch. Can, Um, CLI, yeah, CLI. Yeah. five minutes ago. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did this cha changes before. I just pushed it recently. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't, I'm not, I'm not giving you shit. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. So you did what I was talking about with the to dos. Okay. So let me just read this real quick here so I can understand. And this is outputting that thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. The flow deck will have the, that one. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so we take output dict. Okay. So we grab we go through all the operations. We grab the definition name and we create this output dict that says, okay, definition name maps to um, the operation. The operation. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um Okay, definition name maps to the operation. Um, okay, 
We're that are the first to do outputs. Okay, so I think here's where there's there's one discrepancy on this. Um, okay, so if you end up with something, so here, if you end up with something that has um, only what this is going to overwrite it, right? So if I have two up, so these are this we're going through all these output values yeah. um and so you say for output in op outputs and you're taking the output name and you're setting it to the operation right so if you have multiple things that that produce that you've overwritten them here um oh that's, you need to it. yeah that's yeah do like the dot update i think is what you okay. want um okay. so let's see um but will dot update work even if the key is not present in the dictionary? You should you should check. Uh, so okay. check if key is present. Uh, if not present, set otherwise. Call dot update. Okay. So that's not that's not like critical for what we're talking about here, but like that will be a problem. Um, right. Okay. So okay. So now we have flow dict. And okay, so we go through all the operations. We grab all the inputs for every operation. Um, okay, so for every input in the operations inputs, we say, okay, so operation name, if, if so, if the input is in the output, like if we can create that, then, um, then output dict input name okay okay so okay so we said okay now we're grabbing we're saying okay if the input is in the possible outputs based on other operations we are saying that like the places oh, that be like yeah list the like generate a list of all the operations that will give that yeah output. yeah so this is yeah this gives us the list of operations that can produce this <laughs> oh um, i accounted for the list here but i failed to do that in the previous operation no. uh yeah no yeah. worries yeah no no worries because you're just going to end up with this list I, that's okay oh oh this should probably be a okay so now you said if op input dot name in flow dict um plus equals Temp L. Okay, this is why it's ending up with with it multiple times. Um, okay, so. Oh yeah. Okay. This is it. You you were close. This isn't exactly what I meant, but I didn't explain it well enough then. So, basically, the way that we can take this and make it look like this, right? Is mm -hmm. so yeah. you grabbed all of the you grabbed all of the output definitions. Um, that are created by those operations, right? So basically, you yeah. grabbed things like response JSON, directory, directory, version, and URL, right? Like those are mm -hmm. those are the thing. You grab the definitions for them. Um, so what we want to do is say, um, let's see, what did I? I feel like I uh, let's see. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say. Um, we want to go through all the operations, right? Look at all the outputs, then create this dictionary of of definitions that map to operations, right? So that'll be good. Um, and now when you go through all the inputs, you want to look at the, yeah, you want to say, okay, this maps to this operation good but now you want to say what specifically within that operation it came from so you have the definition right so you know that this this operate this list here would be your list of operation names let me download this let me clone this so i can make some comments on it um okay.
and I decided I should be recording these, so I'll post this on YouTube. Um, no. <laughs> it's okay. No one will see it. Um, <laughs> it's only for our own knowledge. Um, let's see. Dependency backtrack. It's not like everybody's going to be browsing YouTube looking for all the things that we we talked about. Okay, people do stumble upon all these crazy videos and you never know, you might have few views. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully it'll what be people. Get viral, man? What if we get viral? We get oh, viral. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the type of thing that everybody loves to watch. Um, let's see. So, get check out. Okay, I already checked it out. All right. Yeah, well, God help anybody who thinks about... Um, like, everybody will know how, how nuts I am if they watch these videos. Um, so, okay. CD, do, 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 example, should I? Should I? CLI. All right, okay, I'll stop making some comments in here. All right, so now, now we have the uh, a dict, output dict, dict, mapping all of the operation or all of the definitions to the operations that create them. All right, great. That's super cool. Okay, so to do um, update if key exists. Exists uh, otherwise set. Um, okay, so and then here, we go through all the operations. So go through all the operations and look at their inputs. So for each input, uh, we want to we want to say if the input could be produced by an operation in the network, then its definition name will be in output dict, right? Because, um, yeah. Yep. Cool. So, uh, so that'll the input, be the key in the output, right? Yeah, that'll, the that'll be the key, exactly. Um, so then we want to, uh, it will be in output dict. So we want to set flow dict um, operation Okay, operation um, dot name. So we want to set flow dict operation name equals if we're following this pattern here. So we say flow dict operation name equals or er, operation name op input dot name. Eh, is it op input dot name? Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Here's here's the other thing. So keys or items. So because we want to know uh, let's see like uh, so internal name and then definition So the internal name, right, is like the function argument, right? Um, and so the function argument is package, right? The argument to that operation, when we define it as a function, we call it package. Um, okay. So that would be internal name because that's the key to the value mapping that we see. Um, well, I mean, 
you know you know where we see it right uh mm-hmm. do you know or should i specify so specify it i think specify. i would forget let's let's specify it yeah read should i um not pi pi uh yeah okay pi pi Okay, yeah, PyPy package JSON. Okay, yeah, so this is what we're looking at here. Package JSON. Okay, so for op name and output dict. Okay, so we go through all the op. So we're now we're going through all the operations, and we're looking at their inputs, and you know, mm-hmm. example operation. So this is the, for example, if we're looking at this operation, the inputs are package, which is the internal name. So package definition, oops, package um, and Um, okay, um, and then this one, internal name, response JSON, definition, package JSON. This is uh, like dict or whatever. Um, We'll probably change that stuff eventually, but okay. So this is this is uh, yeah, no paste. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here, like when we're going through these things. Um, so we get internal name. Actually, let me make this uh, exactly what it should be. All right. So internal name is now like. You know, because we're going through all the inputs, so internal name is package, right? So, PyPy JSON example. Internal name package definition equals package. Um, so, which is also equals, you know, this guy. So, um, so now we want to set flow dict operation internal name. So operation name, internal name. So the input package. So the operation name is PyPy package JSON. Uh, the internal name. Well, this is a bad example because package is coming from flow, or is is not uh, is not is is coming from the seed, but that's okay. Um, so we want to set the internal name equal to the output dict where we're grabbing the. Um, so we grab the operation, let's see, the, we want to grab, so this is the definition. So we want to say this is definition.name. So we want to grab definition name 
but here's the trick. Uh, so, so if definition name in output dict, we want to say uh, operations equals so. Ah, okay. How do I how do I explain this nicely? Um, basically, what we've got to do is we've got to take all these guys and they now map to the actual operation themselves. So let's see. Um, producing operations. Uh, grab the dict of operations that produce this definition as an output. And so now we've got the operations that produce it. And now we want to set this. So operation name, internal name. We'll just say this is an empty dict. Um, now we set, uh, or this is an empty list. Yeah, because this is a list here. So we set it to be the operation name dot the internal name within that operation, um, which is uh, you got to look through, um, we look through the outputs and we check any ones matching the definition. So we look through the outputs and add any one that matches, matches, matches the definition and set the or and add it to the list in the format of um uh you know operation name dot uh internal name of output um so, uh, I'll just like start this for internal name of output. Got some really long descriptive variable names here. Output definition in. Producing operation in <laughs> dot outputs dot items. Then you do that. Right. So this guy, if output definition equals equals definition dot append and then you append the you gotta you gotta you gotta append uh, you gotta, uh, let's see this will probably just be done now um, <laughs> let's see <laughs> else we just say seed I did not do a good job of explaining it in the comment if then I ended up writing a code. Um, so let's see. I tried. My explanation skills will get better eventually. Um, so then we just say like append producing operation producing operations ah, dot values because we appended yeah. Um, like that. 
does this sort of make sense here? Where basically we go through all these. So we we look at we look at what operations produce this definition, and then we go through all their outputs, and we say if your definition is the same as the definition that I'm looking for as an input, then I want to add you to this list of of uh, of things for this for this operation that has this internal name for the input. Append the producing operations name like in this format where we're doing dot 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 plus the internal name of the output um, so that we're going to end up with this list. We're going to see if we end up with this list. How do I run this thing? How are you running this? What are you doing? I just run should I linker then run underscore bandit. No, no, no. You need to specify to more inputs. Ah. Run underscore band. No, wait. Okay, Run yeah. underscore bandit and package. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I've got my syntax wrong here. So 146. That's why I kept trying to indent for me. Oh. Let's see what happened. Okay. Uh oh. Thought I'd just search for that damn thing. All right, okay, so. There's an else part. Okay, so I need to replace it. With Low dict. All right, let's try this shit. Package JSON. Okay, it's mad now. Operation name. Oh, because we forgot to do that. All right, okay. Oh, this is a handy trick. Set default. If you're looking to set a key that might already be set, you can do set default. Um, let's see. Okay, but now we're going through all the list of definitions. If definition, output name. Okay, if definition, not an output name. Um, <laughs> Oh, so you're initializing a key with a sample value, okay? Yeah, so for operation, okay, operation name. Go set default. Uh, now we just want set default operation name. All right, so this is basically going through and saying, okay, if the operation does not exist in the flow dict, make the operation name equal to... Um, the empty set empty. or okay. the empty dict um and then uh here we say okay the operation right it, it exists as an empty set or as an mm -hmm. empty dict set this key to a empty um list here um or well yeah that's fine um and then this one we're going and saying internal name is the <laughs> because uh, it was not an output dict. Uh, I think that's correct. I mean, this one could just be this, actually. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. This might be wrong. Um, run bandit package. I think this is right, actually. No, oh, wait a second. Uh, can you go down and see if it is actually returning the floor dict? Uh, well, this is, let's see, so... What we've got here, I'll put these windows side by side now. Um, God damn it. I can't do that. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Go. Yeah, I tried that. <laughs> okay, wait. Here we go. All right. Wait, wait. How did you do that? Uh, there's these little sidebars. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now what we've got is like this is flow, and we've got like pypy package JSON would be package.json. And then package has a value of seed, seed. Okay, that's correct. So package URL, um, package.url. So the thing is, I had started mapping them to like instances, and I think mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about instances, but that that shit will it will that will fix itself. We'll figure that out. Um, so now we have responsive JSON maps to response JSON from package JSON. Um, and then we want to check that the other guy also got that. Yeah, so package version gets response JSON map from response JSON. Um, the contents, the cleanup gets mapped from the directory. 
So it's matching things correctly now, I think. Package is seed. Um, I guess that should be determined by... Um, so we give... Let's see. Oh, we did the... You did the... You had the pass. So path info but i don't know if we're even using path info at this point yeah no no that was something that i created just for testing yeah it. yeah so so maybe what we do is yeah we'd we'd have we'd we'd supply all the operations right and then we'd load all the operations so now here here you go here's here's some stuff for you to do um <laughs> You can do. You actually did everything, right? Well, I did. Yeah, I did everything. That's why I'm saying you hear some more shit to do. Um, so, let's see. Okay, this was I pasted this in here, or yeah, that stuff got in there. Oh, because you rebased. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so here's what we need to do. Now we need to look in DFFML service dev yeah, and is it export diagram yeah. no i swear there was a place where oh here run the run stuff um so look in i'll make a note here so now have the Okay, so this path info. Um, so basically, instead of path info being start and end, ed of path info being start and end, uh, make make it a list of operations um, or slash paths. Um, Loadable paths to operations. Um, um, so use so do make it like loadable paths to operations. Make it a list of loadable paths to operations, meaning things that could be passed to the. Um, what is it called? Um, ooh, wait. Maybe we should do this slightly. No. Okay. We'll leave it like this for now. I mean, things that could be passed to the um, DFFML slash service slash dev dot py run, or well, in this format. Command. Okay. So, uh, look at that for more info and copy paste the code, code to load an operation. Um, then once you have the code to load an operation, uh, append that operation to a list and pass it to depth pack track. Okay, so this is going to make this like actually a command line utility. Um, so basically, you take you go into the service dev stuff, um, uh, John. But when do you need this? I mean, like uh, in the next two weeks, I can't work on this. Next two weeks, you can't uh, work on this. Yeah, I have interviews and projects. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have very fair. Yeah. Um, I'll just do this then. Um, like, so within the next two weeks, I got that B-Sides thing coming up on the 26th. Um, mm. so I guess that's, that's like kind of next two weeks here. Um, and basically what oh. I'm going to do. Yeah. So we, I mean, once, once that's together, like there's going to be a lot more operations stuff. We're still ironing out 
the Sudarsana and Yash had ironed out all the kinks in uh, figuring out what was wrong with all the model and source stuff, and so now now we 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 you know they worked on that for the whole summer, and we found out all the weird little things that needed to happen. Um, since you're just getting started on the operations, there's lots of little weird kinks still. And after this, and the DFAS branch that I have going, that'll all be like ironed out, and we'll be able to, 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 to do things more quickly. Um, because okay. so basically what's going on now is this, the, the, what I'm writing here in the comments is basically we want to be able to take, like if I write some Python code and it's just a bunch of operations, if I just supply the path to those, like in the Python syntax and say like, you know, my file colon my function, then if I supply a bunch of those on the command line, it will then print out the data flow that that those op operations create, right? And it'll print that out. Um, I've got it exporting to a YAML format, um, and so what we can now do is we can take these data file or data flows, store them in YAML, um, and then then you can change what what the YAML is doing, right? So you could just edit the YAML file, and then run the YAML file basically. So the YAML file is the data flow. And so you just provide the YAML file, which lists out all the operations that you want to use. And then like, you know, I could in the YAML file say that I want to use the git cleanup operation. Or the first example that I'm going to do is actually have it be, so when we clone that source, right? Uh, or when we download that source, we run bandit on it. Well, there's already a operation that goes and runs and counts the lines of code, the the lines of comments versus the lines of code. And that was for the Git metric stuff. Um, but we don't um, we don't uh, use that here in should I? But we could if we had this data flow format where we can specify that the inputs and the outputs link to each other um, because even if the definitions don't match. So basically the, the demo here would be like, okay, you take the data flow that's the YAML file, you just like add the operation from the Git repo stuff, like the Git centric stuff into this should I YAML file. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're using the operation from, from a different plugin, right? A different, a different package. Uh, does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and why an YAML file? Because uh, people are really used to editing YAML files. Um, like, they're they're pretty convenient. And then also, you know, when we move this to another language, eventually um, the YAML file is just like, you know, YAML is just a, a JSON simplified thing, right? So uh, that's why I was doing YAML. Unless, like, there might be better ways to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's like easy to parse YAML files. I don't know. Well, there's. I mean, no, it's not easy to parse YAML files. Um, there's like one library that everyone uses. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty common. Common format. Uh, that I've seen a lot. That seems like a lot of people are doing it. Like the other. The other thing here is. Um, so with these YAML files, what we'll be able to do is. You can write your operations, right, and you could write them, you know, and, and eventually you'd be able to write them in, like, whatever language you wanted, right? But the YAML file is this language agnostic spec that defines how you're chaining them together. Um, and but why not JSON? JSON is, like, easy, right? Well, so, you just, like, so write dictionary. yeah, J so JSON is easy, right? But JSON's not easy to hand edit the file, Um that's the thing okay. we can, but the other, the other thing of this is that it could be JSON. It could be YAML. I mean, JSON and YAML are pretty much the exact same thing. Only YAML is JSON without the brackets. Um, so, and the quotes, it's just, if you look at a YAML file and a JSON file, it's, it's just, it's JSON without the brackets and quotes. Um, and so it makes it just easier. You have to edit less text by hand if you have to change the file. Um, but I'm, I'm making it so that 
uh, you know, like how we have a million command line arguments for everything. Well, we'll be able to just specify one YAML file or one JSON file to be the command line. And we'll have like a, you know, everything's a plugin. So we'll have a plugin that says, okay, I get my config from a JSON file or a plugin that says I get my config from a YAML file. And it'll populate all the config stuff from whatever format file you, you want to put it in. So because we could just write a config parser plugin for that file format. Um, okay. Which and with JSON and YAML, that's basically as simple as calling dot load and dot dump, right? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the plans. That's the plans right now. Um, and this DFAST stuff, it's it's coming along. It'll be. It, I think it'll be done pretty soon. Um, uh, along with this, I was working on the the as an update. I'm working on this uh, adding models to the HTTP API. Um, so there's the HTTP API is just like the command line interface only you post JSON to it. Um, and then it does all the things that you would, could do from the command line or from the library usage. Um, and so Yash and, uh, Sudarsana have, have started thinking about writing a web UI for this stuff. Um, and the first thing that, that Yash wanted to go tackle was the models. Um, the sources are already up there. Uh, it's just not so like... We just, you know, Yash is really excited about doing models. Um, so one, he's going to need, he needs sources, right, to, to, to pass to the models um, to say, hey, model, here's your source of data. So I'm almost done implementing the, the models um, so that you can say, like, okay, instantiate a model, pass it this source of data that's, like, from the MySQL database that Sudarsana um, implemented. Um, and so then you could have this web UI where you could say, like, okay, you know, Here's 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 my data sources. Connect them all. Um, upload my CSV file, and now here I'm configuring my model and uh, running it. And then what we're gonna do? The DFAST stuff is basically like it's one branch where I've like messed around with a lot of stuff. But what's gonna happen is when that lands, um, it's going to enable you to run the data flows from the HTTP API. So we can take should I and we can export the data flow as a YAML file, um, send it to the HTTP API and say register this data flow. And then when you post a package name or like, you know, do a git package name, like you could do, you could register it as the URL path of like slash should I, you know, where the next slash would be the package name. And so if you go to this endpoint, it runs the whole data flow for should I and uh, on whatever package name that you put like, you know, slash should I slash some package, it takes that some package and it runs the whole data flow. Um, so that's that's what I'm I'm also working on that. Um, okay. So we'll be able to we'll be able to export these things to YAML files um, and then send them to like different that's the bill thing that we came up with that one day um, which i'm now calling a multicom so now we'll have this yaml file that we can go and register with this communication channel um and then you know the different communication channels like the http api or like an irc interface would say okay i know that i'm running this data flow for this you know initiating thing which would be like that url path um, and now we can run the same code over different interfaces just by defining it in that yaml file um, and then the next step beyond that will be to take the models and make operations out of the models so that you could then you know plug on some machine learning into that data flow Okay. That's the roadmap. I'm hoping to get it done by the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it's coming. It's really close here now, though, because I reworked a lot of the the DFAS, the DFAS stuff, and then the HTTP API are all pretty close now. Um, uh, um, so, and then with this stuff that we just did here, and you've been doing on the backtrack, that'll really easily. Um, export the data flows just you know people will write the operations um they'll just say okay here's all my operations on the command line give me the data flow as a yaml file and then they can take that yaml file and say register it with the http api um, and all of a sudden you know they're running their stuff from an http server um that's that's the grand plan here so yep okay. all right um, and that's that's what I mean. So after that's that's like the stuff I'm hoping to get done by the 25th, and then after that, it's basically just like I want to write a bunch of demo apps, um, mm -hmm. 
and you know some that include you know I want to, we want to work on like that web UI and then we want to work on like a bunch of demo apps to show how all this stuff works um, so yeah that's yeah. the plan about the web UI like uh, I'll work on the Hadoop stuff but then it's mm -hmm. like I've been working on this for so long so I think I can like you know switch to the web UI and yeah like, yeah Time. So, like, for, uh, next week I'll like try to do as much as possible, and then uh, next week I'll take up some like uh, UI stuff also. I'll do both parallelly because if the pandemic is going to run for like an hour. Then yeah, I, exactly. Like, You're probably work. bored of working on the Hadoop stuff by now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then and the sources, all the sources documentation. I mean, if you wanted to just start playing around with that right now, like. The HTTP API has all the documentation and Python test cases and some JavaScript code to interact with the source stuff. Um, so yeah, cool. I'll and, look at the HTTP API and try to work on the sources. Cool. Part. Yeah, and you know where the documentation link is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I, I actually, I have some code that a uh, an intern wrote to do like uh, a little like annotation API. Um, with the source stuff, and so I could like I could send you that, and you could see how she was interacting with the JavaScript API. Um, but obviously, you'd be doing everything in a, in React. Hey, it um, was Lauren, right? Yeah, no, not Lauren. <laughs> um, oh. what's her name? Uh, Catherine. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Lauren. I haven't. I emailed Lauren. I don't know. She never never emailed me back. She kind of dropped off the map. I wanted to see like if I could pawn off my fuzzing work on her, but that wasn't working. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, great. Yeah, I would love if you wanted to start like messing with the React and the sources. That would be super great because Yash is going to need the sources before he can, um, you know, do any of the model stuff because you have to pass a model a source. Um, so he's going to yeah. need. Yeah. Basically, like the way that's going to work is you'll see the API and you'll see how. Like I mean, I'm recording right now, sir, or I'm displaying right now, so we'll I'll just show you real quick. Um, um, so HTTP API. Um, so basically, you configure that like you list you can say list sources, and it returns you this giant thing, which is the output of the config method as a JSON. And so basically, you could parse this and create like a form you know like just an input form that like uses these data types to say like you know maybe this is like a radio button maybe you know this is a string if something was an int you would say like just number field um um you know whatever you want to do right so yeah. you you use create you grab create react app you first thing you do is like say here's your options right if someone says like you know create a new source you list this api you say okay what do you have to work with and then you know when they click on csv you populate you create a little form with all this stuff populated here um and then you say save and it hits this configure api endpoint and it sends that form over and then now if you want to like do things like you know examine all the repos you could create something that's like um you know, you could create like a little table and, and you could just, when you say view, it just goes and hit this repos API and it lists all the, all the stuff in that source. Um, or, and you can do like, you could start working on the upload stuff. Like what, uh, there's a lot you could start doing with HTTP API to expose all the sources in a nice little UI. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll like try to set up a uh, like simple React UI. And, exactly. Uh, send like a post to get request. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have some, I think there's also, uh, yeah, you'll have, uh, you'll have significantly more fun doing that than uh, fighting with, um, <laughs> fighting with a dupe a bunch. Uh, but continue to fight with a dupe uh, whenever that works. So, uh, so, oh no, this is for you. Um, so, uh, when you want to start building the web UI. And then if Yash, you know, if Yash does something, or well, like whatever you guys end up, whatever ends up happening there, um, uh, he'll need the sources first. Um, so if you want to just start running on that, I'm sure he would be, he would be happy, um, especially since you have more experience doing that. Um, 
it sounds like he doesn't he hasn't actually done done that before then maybe he could just you know jump into the code that you've written so yeah. cool all right well thanks guys good uh thanks for showing up today it was good to talk to you both yeah okay okay thank you john thanks oh see you guys later then see you yeah, bye Ivan. have a good bye. one bye.